All right, let's go ahead and work 4.22. This problem asks us to calculate several different things. The first one in A is the mass in grams of the solute that is present in 185.8 milliliters of 0.267 molar calcium acid. Okay, so we've got a solution here. <coughs> I don't know what this looks like in the visual. I don't want you to lose track of that. So we've got a beaker full of uh, 185.8 milliliters of solution. And the ingredients of that solution, certainly water will be present. So liquid water is going to be our solvent. It's present in the largest quantity. It determines the phase. But it's not just pure water because what we've done is we've added some calcium acetate, which is an ionic compound, into that water. It all dissolves up, okay? The calcium acetate acetate's soluble, acetates are soluble, it dissolves up, and those ions then float around in that beaker to make a solution. Okay, so this is what our visual is. Now, we know that the concentration of the calcium acetate is 0.267 molar. Now, molarity is one of our concentration units. It was introduced this chapter. That's why I'm working this problem, so you can get a for what molarity is all about and how to use it. It's a very important measurement of concentration. You should learn how to use molarity, how to define it, and how to perform calculations such as the one we're going to work. Because molarity discusses the relative amount of solute versus solvent in a very specific way. And how that works is molarity, which is given the capital M symbol, is defined the number of moles of a solute. Here that's calcium acetate. The solute is always the minor component of the mixture. And we're going to divide the number of moles of solute by the liters of solution, where the volume of the solution specified that that volume be measured in liters. This is our molarity. Okay, so this is how molarity is always, always going to be defined, regardless if we're talking about calcium acetate or sodium chloride or sucrose or anything else. Molarity is always defined this way. The solute just changes, right? All right, so what we want to know here is we've got this solution. It's a specific volume. It's a specific number of moles per liter of the solute. Can we figure out how much mass must be contained in that solution? And I think we can. Okay, of the three problems that we're going to work here in 422, this one's probably the most difficult. <laughs> so we start with the hardest first, I guess, but it's no trouble, because all we need to do is use our definition from molarity to help us. Now, another thing I like to do with this equation sometimes is rearrange it algebraically, okay? What if I divided both sides by this term, or I multiply both sides by this term in the denominator, okay? So I multiply both the left and the right of the equal sign by volume in liters. Now, if I do that, what I'm left with is an equation that looks like this. This right side just becomes number of moles of solute because the volumes cancel. If I multiply by volume and volume, it cancels out, okay? But the left side of the equation becomes molarity times volume in liters. I also like to consistently tell students that this form of this equation is pretty useful. So actually both of these are pretty useful. You should commit them to memory. Why is this so useful? Because it tells us that the number of moles of a solute or a compound present in a solution can be found or calculated by taking the molarity of the solution and multiplying by the volume of the solution in liters. Now, let's try that here and let's kind of see where it gets us, okay? Now, in this particular case, I was told that the solution is 0.267 moles per liter. And I've got 185.8 milliliters. Okay. Now again, 185.8 milliliters is a volume. But when I use the volume in this equation, I want it to be in liters. So I'm going to have to do a unit conversion. And hopefully by now we all know that a thousand milliliters is one liter, 
and consequently I can move the decimal place three spots and realize that 0 0.1858 liters corresponds to 185.8 milliliters. So I've got 0.267 moles per liter times 0.1858 liters. Okay. Now if I do the computation on that, I find that in this solution there's 0 0.04961 mole of solute present. 0 0.04961 mole, just by doing that multiplication. I figured out how many moles of my calcium acetate must be present in this solution as governed by the molarity that was stated and the volume. Okay. Now that's useful to me because ultimately I want to figure out how many grams of calcium acetate is present. So now that I have moles, which is an amount, all I need to do is do a moles to mass conversion like we learned about in the previous chapter. And then I'm done. Right? So I'm going to erase this other statement up here. How can I do the moles to mass conversion? Oops, I forgot six. So I have 0.04961 moles. Hopefully you're getting good at this one by now. You know that to go into grams from moles, you need the what? The molecular weight or the molar mass of the compound in question. Here that's calcium acetate. Now, calcium acetate, what's its formula, right? You need to be able to write its formula. CaCH3COO. I like it. I like to write acetate like this, okay? Now, to balance the charges, calcium is plus two, acetate is only minus one, so you need two copies of these for one of that, okay? Again, importance of writing formulas. Again, I'm stressing that, right? You, Hopefully you're getting an understanding for why that's so important now, because these problems, they just give you the names of the chemicals, they don't give you the formulas. If you don't have the formula, you can't find the molecular weight, you can't find the answer, okay? Nonetheless, this is the formula for the calcium acetate. Turns out it works out to about 158.18 grams per mole. Okay. When I do the calculation on that, I find that 7.847 grams. Is what's present in my beaker. Okay, so from molarity and volume, I was able to figure out how many grams of solute was present. It's a pretty typical thing to have to do. Okay, um, it's a nice problem because it shows uh, all the aspects of molarity and all the conversions you can do. Let's move on to part B. Molarity of a 500 milliliter solution that contains 21.1 grams of potassium iodide. Okay, so this is our solute, the potassium iodide. We're going to throw that into water and dilute till the final volume is 500 milliliters, or right at a half a liter. Okay? We want to know what is the resultant molarity. On the previous problem, we discussed that molarity is the number of moles of solute divided by the liters, the solution, or the volume of solution liters. Well, I'm going to make a quick inventory of what I've got. I like the fact that I was told 500 milliliters of solution because that's half a liter, 0.5 liter. If I do the conversion from milliliters to liters, that's the volume that goes in the denominator. Now, the only thing I need to know is the number of moles of solute. I was told I've got 21.1 grams of solute. Now here that's potassium iodide. Notice again, they give you the name, all right? So hopefully you can understand that potassium is plus one, iodide is minus one. You can write the formula as Ki. But we still need to go do a mass to moles conversion here, okay? We're going to convert to moles of Ki because that's what's required to put here in our equation, the number of moles of the solute. And we need a grams as a conversion factor. We need that molar mass of Ki. Looks like if you do the addition for K plus I, the molar mass is right at 166 grams per mole. So you do the 21.1 divided by the 166, and you get 0 0.12711 mole. That moles of solid goes right here. And 
and then we're rocking and rolling. And we do the division, we find the molarity of the solution is 0 0.25, 42 moles per liter. A chemist might say that's 0 0.2542 molar. All right, so that's part B. Moving on to part C. What does part C read? The number of moles of solute and 145.6 liters of 0.85 molar sodium cyanide. Alright, so we got a very large volume of 0.85 mole per liter sodium cyanide here. It makes me think back to the 70s when a bunch of people unfortunately um, were poisoned in uh, South America by drinking a drink laced with sodium cyanide. Um, this is such a huge quantity, I don't know what you'd need that much for. So it's kind of a bit of a morbid problem, but nonetheless, we can certainly work this. Now we want number of moles of the solute, which is the sodium cyanide, all right? Remember earlier, I told you the importance of this equation? That for solution stoichiometry, the number of moles of a solute can always be found by multiplying the molarity times the volume Okay, so this becomes a pretty straightforward problem if we can remember this because we're given all the information we need. We're told that we have 0.85 moles per liter as a concentration. We're also told that we've got 145.6 liters, which is quite a formidable volume, right? It's already in liters, so that's good to go. The other number is in moles per liter, so the units work out and we get moles specifically in this case 123.76 moles of the solid and here that's sodium cyanide. So that's our answer to part C. So hopefully this problem has given you a nice introduction to understanding how to use this molarity equation for what molarity is about. It's just a concentration, how much solute per volume of solution this introduced this equation was extremely useful okay, for solutions to a We we'll use this a lot in this chapter and moving forward. So kind of try to commit that one to memory as well. But you need to remember what molarity is. Remember its definition. And remember how to do these types of calculations. It's really easy to give you, um, you know, this type of problem on an exam or on homework. Okay? It's quantitative, so it has a pretty straightforward, um, definite answer. And uh, again, we like to ask questions like that. So hope it was useful.